I'm Julie, and I'm a dancer. I'm Darnell, and I'm a dancer too. Today, we'll help you become dancers. I love dance because it allows me to express myself without words. Same. Moving my body helps me to understand different ideas and feelings. In this lesson, we're going to show how we can demonstrate different emotions with our bodies. As dancers, we have four tools that help us to create art. These four dance tools spell best. B E S T. Last time you learned about the first two tools. Do you remember what they are? The B is for body and the E is for energy. That's right. And you can learn more about these tools in some of our previous lessons. Today, we're going to focus on the S and the T. The third dance tool starts with the letter S. Hmm, do you know what it is? It's something we need a lot of to move around and dance. <gasps> space! Yes, that's it. While energy tells us how to move, space tells us where to move. Space is really important for dancers to move safely. Take a moment and make sure that you have your own personal space in the room. Now that you have your own personal bubble, join us as we learn about space. First, we'll learn about the seven directions we can move our body in space. Choose one part of your body to move in several directions. You might choose your arm, your pointer finger, or your head. I'm choosing to move my arms in different directions. Cool. I'm going to move my head. Hmm. Right, left, up, down, forward, and backward and the corners of the room, the diagonals. <laughs> Julie, how can we use directions to show different emotions? Like, what direction would you use to show that you just uh, won the lottery? I would be feeling happy and excited and that makes me feel like moving up. Mm. What direction would you use to show that you are um, missing your best friend? I'd move down. Hmm, yeah. You look like you're really sad or lonely. Let's try two more directions. Can you use direction to show me how you might feel about speaking in front of a large group for the very first time? How about this? Yes. Moving backward can make us look nervous or scared. Exactly. Oh, how can we show the opposite? What if we worked hard to prepare for a great presentation? Let's move forward. Yeah, now we look brave. And confident. Mm -hmm. The next thing we can change in space is our level. That's how high or low we are to the floor. There are three levels. High, middle, and low. Let's start by moving at a high level. How could we make our bodies taller than they are right now without using any props? Oh, join us by reaching up high. What else could we do? Uh, we could push up on our toes. <gasps> or jump. High levels make me feel excited. <laughs> How do they make you feel, Julie? I feel joyful. <laughs> our next level is middle. That's anything that cuts our body in half. <gasps> Not like that. It's anything that makes us half as tall. Oh, like touching our toes? Yes, or sitting on our knees. Ooh, how about this? <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> our last level is the opposite of high. Low. Yes, low levels might even happen on the floor. Sometimes as dancers, we call this floor work. Is this a low level? It is. Is and it's my favorite dance move. <sighs> Can we roll while we're down here? Totally. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> oh, how about break dancing? Or doing the splits? Yeah, we could use levels to show different emotions. But what level would you use if your best friend forgot about your birthday party? We can use a low level to show disappointment or loneliness. What level could we use to show how you feel if your teacher told you there's extra recess time today? <laughs> High levels can show the emotion of excitement. Or being joyful. Yeah. Next, we can change how much space we take up by varying our size. 
Follow along while we make ourselves as small as possible and then grow to our biggest size. Let's start in a tiny little ball, taking up as little space as possible. Darnell, what emotion do you feel? I feel nervous, scared. And shy. Ugh. Now let's start to change our size. By the time we count to eight, try to take up as much space as you can. Here we go. One, two, three, four. You should be about halfway there. Five, six, seven, almost there. Eight. <laughs> if you're wearing your favorite outfit, how much space might you use? Try to change your size to show how you'd be feeling. We can take up a lot of space to show we're feeling bold and outgoing. What about the opposite? Can you move your body to show that you're bored and so tired that you just want to curl up and fall asleep? We can also change our size by traveling around the room or staying in one place. When we travel around, we call that locomotor movement. Let's try. Mm -hmm. Locomotor movements get us from one spot to another, like running, crawling, scooting, or rolling. The opposite of locomotor is non-locomotor. That's any movement that stays in place. But we aren't frozen. We can still move. Oh. Ooh. Just not travel. <laughs> so like a, a, a bend or a sway or hula hoop or wiggle. <laughs> Lastly, we can take up space by traveling along two different pathways, straight or curved. Let's try moving on a straight pathway. It's like you are walking on a grid or a tightrope. Mm. 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 The opposite of straight is curved. Let's try moving on a curved pathway. What type of pathway could we use to show that we just got in an argument? Join us. We could use a straight pathway and show tension and discomfort. Hmm. What about the opposite? What pathway could we use to show that we are on our way to the amusement park? Look so silly and relaxed. We are moving and a grooving. <laughs> the last thing we can change in space is our shape. How, how could you make the shape of a circle with your body? I can make a circle with my whole body. Mm-hmm. I can make a circle with my arms. Wow, Julie. I noticed that your circle was locomotor. Super creative. Thanks, Darnell. How can we show different emotions by changing our shape? Let's all try to show that we are unsure about how to ask someone to dance at our first school dance. Darnell, I noticed that you did this movement, which made you look really bashful and unsure. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what I was going for. <laughs> now, let's all try to show how we feel when the bell rings on the last day of school before summer break. <laughs> I feel so wild! And free! <laughs> Great, Great job! job. Ooh. Let's review all the elements of space. I can change my... Direction. I can change my... Level. I can change my... Size. I can change my... Shape. Yeah, wonderful. Oh, now you know your third dance tool. Space. We are almost there. Our last tool starts with a T and tells us when to move. Time. Mm -hmm. Do you know how many counts dancers usually count and create in? Five, six, seven, eight. Eight counts. You've got it. <laughs> we can also change our tempo, how fast or slow we move. Join us as we count an eight count while patting the rhythm on our bodies. 
Mm -hmm. We will count you in with a five, six, seven, eight, and then you can join in. Five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, now let's see if we can speed it up by going faster. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> now see if we can slow it all the way down. Five, six, seven, eight. Whew, chilly. Uh, what tempo can we use to show that we're running late for an important meeting? Fast! <laughs> yes, a fast tempo can make us appear frazzled, energized, or electrified. Darnell, what tempo can we use to show that we are relaxing at the beach? Ah, slow. Yes, a slow tempo helps us to appear calm and peaceful. Now you know your last dance tool. Time. time. Now that you've learned your last two dance tools, space and time, how can you use those tools to show different emotions through movement? You could try dancing, maybe, how you feel right now. Then maybe ask a classmate to guess what you're feeling based on your movements. We had so much fun dancing with you today. Have a great day, and always remember to keep, keep dancing! dancing.